All right, guys. Florida State is Cheez It Bowl champions. And, you know, it, it's something to really behold because Florida State is now 10 and 3. They've gotten their 25th 10 win season in program history. It's really something that Florida State always wanted. I know you can look at this Cheez It Bowl and say we played a, a lousy Oklahoma 6 and 16 with some opt outs and everything. That's great. You can say that. But at the same time, this is a huge win for Florida State in terms of confidence boosters, just the way they needed to handle business in this game. So you look at the beginning part of this game. I mean, we were down 14 to three early in the second quarter. We really needed a penalty to make it um, instead of 21 to three. They had to attempt a 46 yard field goal and was unable to get that. It was a missed field goal at that point, And Florida State kind of jumped on top of everything, was able to get the touchdown with Ontario Wilson, had the two-point conversion that was wild with Riot Rector and Brian, uh, Brian Courtney. And then, you know, at halftime, it was 17-11. to 11. So you had to get momentum coming through this. Um, you saw in the second half, they were very, very optimistic with certain things. Treshawn Ward had two touchdowns uh, in the, in the uh, second half, and it was very big for Florida State because – you look at this team, and they won 35-32, to 32, and this was a big moment for Florida State just in terms of conceptualizing what Florida State has been the last five seasons. They have not been very good at all. You look at the 2021 season where we started 0-4. We had that Jacksonville State loss that everyone keeps harping on. You know, they finished the season pretty strong. You know, they went 5-3 and three to end the season. They had that big loss to Florida at the end of the season. And it was just something kind of uh, disappointing, I guess you could say. Florida State didn't finish the job. Mike Norvell knows that. The coaching staff knows that. The players know that. So what are you going to do about it? So Florida State come out, and they had to understand that this was a team that they were favored by about 10 points against. This is a team they should have been able to dominate. But guess what? Fabian Lovett wasn't in the lineup. And, of course, without making excuses, Florida State's three losses they had this season were without Fabian Lovett. Uh, he got injured in the LSU game and then came back a little bit later during the Georgia Tech game. And you saw the difference between the defense and being able to run. Javante Barnes had over 100 yards in this game. You know, Mims, he had those two receptions that were huge. I'm talking about double covered, um, very good coverage on Renato Green there at the end. And then Akeem Dent coming over um, at the safety position and trying to jar the ball loose, but was able, unable to do so. And that, those were two massive 30-yard catches. And uh, when you're looking at it, Dylan Gabriel had a pretty nice game. But when you pressured him and brought a lot more heat because you don't have that defensive line, uh, specifically at defensive tackle, because I think Robert Cooper is a serviceable ACC defensive tackle. But the problem is, without Fabian Lovett being an all-caliber type of player, you know, you're having to rely on Joshua Farmer, who I think is very good. You're having to rely on Daniel Lyons and Malcolm Ray and guys like that. So, Overall, I think it's very good that Florida State was able to land two transfer portal defensive tackles in Darrell Jackson and Braden Fisk. Um, but overall, I think Jordan Travis was the main reason for this game. He made everything happen. Uh, 27 for 38, 418 yards, two touchdowns, and the one interception they threw a little bit behind him on a timing route. Uh, Johnny Wilson had some moments in this game where he faced adversity. He dropped a couple of passes, but he still finished with eight receptions for 202 yards. It had a huge reception at the very end of the last drive. Uh, Ryan Fitzgerald knocking down the game winning field goal basically to seal the game. Jared Burst, when he was basically shadowed all night and did not do anything in that game until the very last play of the game to sack Dylan Gabriel and end this game off in stunning fashion for them. I mean, it was just great to see. I mean, even though Treshawn War uh, Trey Ward had the great two touchdowns and everything, and then you turn over and have Trey Benson that was 35 yards away from having 1,000 yards. Everybody thought that was a shoe in. He only had 25 yards. The offensive line didn't really do that well in run blocking, and they had to do other ways to kind of scheme around it. But just overall, man, this is just a team that never gave up, never quit, and I think this is kind of a testament to Mike Norville going into the next season. You talk about in 2016, we won 10 games. We had those blowout losses to Louisville, and we also had some not-so-great moments there in the, in the middle of the season. But, you know, we turned around and had that huge Orange Bowl win against Michigan – and then turn around in 2017, and we all saw what happened. You lost to Alabama. You uh, had DeAndre Francois get injured, and then the season kind of derailed. We cannot allow that to happen here with Mike Norvell. I think he understands that, understands the goal and everything like that. He talks about how you can never put a ceiling on this team because this team is really what they are. They're really good. The biggest thing is you have three question marks. You have a Fabian Lovett. You have a Jamie Robinson. 
And then you also have a Jared Verse, who you're looking at potentially for the NFL. You know, you're looking to see if they're going to come. Now, Fabian Lovett did not dress out in this game. Um, we'll kind of see how his status goes through that. Jamie Robinson played an exceptional game. He had 14 tackles, you know, two sacks. He did a really good job, fumble recovery. Um, and then Jared Verse, like I said, had that sack at the very end after he was contained most of the game, um, but was still able to make an impact of some sort. But just going overall, I mean, if, if Florida State's able to have one of those three defenders come back, man, that would be massive. And Jamie Robinson looks like he wants to have a New Year's Day present for Florida State fans. I hope that means that he's staying. We'll, we'll see. I definitely think he's going to the NFL, but we'll definitely see. I think Todd McShay has him as the sixth best safety in the NFL draft for this upcoming season. So we'll see, man. But this is just a great way for Florida State fans to kind of go through it. This is almost a sold-out Cheez-It Bowl that's kind of unheard of. I mean, you look at last year's Cheez-It Bowl when Clemson played Iowa State, and there wasn't a whole lot of fans in the upper deck section. You got Florida State fans all the way at the top. You know, you probably had 85 90% of Florida State fans in that crowd. Um, I think Florida State really showed in and showed out. These fans have a very likable team in Florida State that you really haven't seen in quite some time. Even when they were winning a national championship back in 2013, that was not a likable team. In terms of the national media standpoint, everybody talks about Florida State at this point. Will Florida State come back? And I think all the doubters are talking about if Mike Norvell was on the hot seat coming into this year. I think he proved a lot of doubters wrong in this. Everybody's kind of eating crow with that. But I definitely think that Oklahoma was a great opponent in this one. Definitely was a little bit more of a scarce, more than I thought. I thought it was gonna they were gonna win by two touchdowns, but uh they definitely come to play. Dylan Gabriel played a really good game. Their defensive line caused a lot of pressure up the middle to be able to disrupt some of those rushing lanes that we had, especially the counter runs that we were also um, very successful at most of the year. Um, but just overall, I think it was a very good game. Shout out to Brent Venables and his staff as they go through. And Oklahoma is going to have a tremendous team for next season and hopefully in his second year. But I really appreciate all the love and support as always. Um, if anyone has any questions or anything, feel free to DM me on my Instagram account or my Twitter account at Nor Norvell Central. And as always, I hope each and every one of you have a great day and go Noles.